just trying to crawl back inside. Not mm. this again. Okay. Again? Huh. Did she just say not this again? Oh shit, he's going to the window. He's going to the window. Mike was two grades ahead of me in school, and he probably failed a couple on top of that. Oh shit. He was big, and everybody was scared of him. On a Friday, Pike got that past up. November, Pike left school after his usual extra hour of detention to walk home. And that was the last time anybody saw him. Damn, Pike. Alright, this one's called Buzzkill, posted by Alter. The thumbnail looked insane, bro. So happy we hit it off tonight. I really, really like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this just feels really real. You know? <laughs> <clears throat> Promise you're not gonna murder me or anything, <laughs> right? Yes. Or, I mean, no, I uh, I definitely haven't killed anyone. <laughs> and if I had, oh, it was uh. an accident. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a dangerous sense of humor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> scary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I got an eyelash in my eye. Sorry, oh, let me just. Can I take a look? Um. Hmm. All I see are two pretty eyes and one beautiful. Bro, I feel like this is about to go super left, bro. Super left. Ah, oh. Sorry. Uh, let me just check this in my ear, mirror in my mirror. <laughs> just hold that thought. Great job. I'm actually kind of worried. Hold on. Okay. Easy does it. Oh my god, oh my god, I hate Ow. this. Ew, ew, ew. What is. <gasps> Oh my god! Ew, 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 ew. Ew, oh ew, ew, ew. Just trying to crawl back inside. Ew. Not this again. Okay. Again? Huh. Did she just say not this again? <laughs> she don't like it. <laughs> ew. My camera's about to die too, bro. Oh, come on. Ah. Hey, uh, everything's fine. <laughs> Just grabbing some tape. I'll only be a minute. Uh, do you need any help? <laughs> nah, I'm I'm good. <laughs> uh, just she said stay not put. this again. Like this is a normal <laughs> thing, bro. What the fuck? A minute. Is going so well. Uh, we have a nice dinner. Spoke to the police. And now, all you have to do is just stay calm! Ah! Oh uh, my god. Uh, oh! Her eye is literally out the fucking socket. What even is this? Get out of my face! Ooh, jackpot! Oh, Rick, I thought.
thought I was gonna lose you. I'm so sorry about tonight. But you know, it's all taken care of. Ew, and now, ew, ew, we can be together. Just you and me. Every day. <laughs> Forever, baby! Now! Where were we? Oh my god, that's fucking gross, bro. Ugh. I'm turning this shit off, bro. I'm sick of this shit. What the fuck even is that? Nah, he's bugging. You always gotta do leave that door, bro. Leave that door. Like, what the fuck, man? Alright, bro, calm down. What the fuck, nigga? If he says some shit like, I see you, bro, he got it. Oh shit, he's going to the window. He's going to the window. Going to the window. Nigga, this is for a... Just drop the food at the door. Bro, just drop it at the door. Oh my god! This nigga, oh my god, oh my god. Imagine he says, I'll be waiting. Oh shit. Bro. He should have checked first. Dang. I'm sorry, bro. Fifty dollar tip for that trash ass, bro. McDonald's is fucking 
ass, bro. Like, there's no way. Now I gotta subscribe to them, bro. What the fuck? That was amazing. Bro, it says horror short. Like, horror short. Why is... Do some of these be like 24 minutes. Like, god damn, nigga. I'll never forget the summer of 95. Oh, shit. I was 13 that year. A heat wave had set in, making it one of the hottest Julys on record. Okay. The house I grew up in on Lake Michigan didn't have air conditioning. Most of the time, that was fine. At night, a breeze would come in off the water, so just an open window was usually enough to cool things down and sleep pretty comfortably. But not that summer. That summer was different. Some of my friends and I had taken to camping outside to try and escape the heat. Okay. Jordy Baker, Augie McLean, and me. I don't know if it really made all that much difference. I think maybe we just like being together. That made it easier to get. But this reminds me of the quarry for some reason. Remember that game? I can't remember the first day I met Jordy. We lived on the same street in our small town and we did everything together. He was my best friend. Mm. It felt like it had always been that way. Augie was a quiet kid back then, but you wouldn't know it when we were alone. So much so that his big mouth got us kicked out of my backyard. Dad had to be up at five for work, and he didn't exactly appreciate Augie's high-pitched laugh the same way Jordy and I did. There was a clearing in the pines behind Jordy's house where we used to hang out sometimes, so we decided to set up camp back there. An old, rusted-out Buick Century marked the spot. I'm not gonna lie, I know this is right now. I always wondered whose car that used to be. I've only been camping one time. Back before it became like, really good, woods, not gonna I mean. Thinking about it now, I'm not even really sure how it got out there through the trees in the first place. We cleaned out the broken glass and the cigarette butts left behind by the neighborhood teenagers. We made a fire pit out of one of the wheel rims Jordy managed to pry off. The mosquitoes out there were ruthless at sundown. And dry, prickly needles covered the ground in a thick blanket under the trees. Jeez. The only thing I hated more than that feeling under my feet when I wasn't wearing any shoes was the crunching sound they made whenever I was. It wasn't all that cozy of a spot, but at least it was private. A place far enough away from the rest of the world that we could stay up all night laughing and no one would care. Jordy had skimmed some beer from a case in the basement that his dad was working on. Four bottles of lukewarm lager to share between us. Our beer is so Not foul, exactly bro. a blowout, but not enough that Mr. Baker would miss them either. I don't drink much beer these days. But even just the smell of it always like, brings me back to sick. that night. Where's the other guy? The hours slipped past as we stoked the fire, talking about nothing in particular. That half a sip of beer must have gone right to Augie's head as he called it a night pretty early on without even finishing one bottle. Mm. We didn't mind. More for us. At some point, Jordy brought up what happened to Pike Lister. Pike was two grades ahead of me in school. And he'd probably failed a couple on top of that. Oh, shit. He was big. And everybody was scared of him. On a Friday, Pike got that past up. November, Pike left school after his usual extra hour of detention to walk home. And that was the last time anybody saw him. Damn, Pike. The search lasted for weeks. 
they never found anything. Some people said he just took off, ran away from home. Others thought he might have drowned in the lake accidentally. Not Jordy, though. I listened quietly as he laid it all out. How his dad said it wasn't the first time something like this had happened around here. How back in the 70s, four people disappeared without a trace. Damn. And how around that same time, locals had started seeing something in the woods that wrapped around our town. Pale creatures with large eyes and long limbs creaked around on all fours. The Pine Creepers. That's what we called them anyway. Jordy figured that's what happened to Pike. The pine bro, I'm not gonna lie, the storytelling is amazing, bro. I feel like I'm really like a I laughed kid. him off and eagerly changed the subject. We ended up burning a couple more sticks before letting the fire die and heading to bed. One of us could take the back of the Buick, and the other had to sleep in the tent with Augie. To call it a two man tent was being generous. No gay shit, bro. I'm gonna have to go and lay, lay in with Augie, bro. Because I can't be by myself outside, bro. Because, fool, imagine you're in the car, right? And then something knocks at the window. You're dead. At least if with Augie next to you. Worst case, you leave that nigga. <laughs> but it's like, damn, bro. Like, damn. I mean, all right. Best case scenario, you both, like, fight whatever the thing is. Worst case, you leave him. But, like, in the car, you're like, fucked. Or at least that's what I let Jordy think. I'd never admit it at the time, but the truth is... All that talk about the creepers had me a little scared. See, I would have been. Yeah, Bobby's we just talked about the creepers and spooning too, bro. Seemed like a fair price to pay if I didn't have to be alone outside. After all, if they could take Pike Lister, what chance did any of us have? Damn. I'm not sure what time it was when I woke up. It was still dark out, and I could hear rain coming down outside. For the first few minutes, I just laid there, listening to the steady sound of the drops against the tent. It wasn't long before I realized that beer had gone right through me, and I wasn't going to be able to hold it. Bro, he's KO'd. I fumbled around until I found the lantern, and I made my way outside. He's fucked. The night air had cooled down a bit with the rain, which felt nice. The whole sky was clouded over, Wait, he blocking out any open. light from the moon or the stars. My eyes finally started adjusting to the dark. That was when I noticed it. Something catching the light just beyond the edge of the clearing. A dim, reflective shine that flickered as I moved the lantern. Took me a second to realize what I was looking at. Eyes oh, fuck no. watching me. Four deep. It was hard to see much of what those eyes belonged to. I knew what they were. Pine creepers. Pulse pounded in my ears as we stared each other oh, down. Shit. I carefully started backing up, never once looking away. I wanted to turn and run so badly. Where's he gonna I run? Just though? kept slowly taking one step after another. Are they taking a step forward? He went back to sit down. I got back into the tent as quickly as I could without making much noise. Maybe if I was quiet enough, those things would move along. I thought about waking Augie, but didn't want him to freak out and draw attention to us. Bro. Seconds passed. Nothing. The rustling of the trees and the calm drone of the rain. Just as I started to think that maybe I'd overreacted, maybe my mind could be playing tricks on me, it started. That familiar, awful sound. The crunch of those needles.
Oh, no. Nah. There was something moving around outside the tent. See, imagine you're in a car by yourself. I did my best to hold my breath. The worst part of it all was I knew Jordy was out there. Damn. Alone. Damn. I kept telling myself he wouldn't wake up. He was safer in the Buick. That I should stay still. Stay quiet. I laid there, and I kept listening for what felt like forever. I was too scared to do anything else. I never woke up Augie. I never called out to Jordy. I never did anything. That's probably a smart decision. Damn, he's wildin' though, bro. Trunk wide open. The hours passed and I must have fallen asleep for a few minutes because the next thing I knew, the birds had suddenly started chirping and even from inside the tent, I could tell it was getting light out. I gathered any bit of courage I had, threw the sleeping bag off, and gave Augie a shove. I climbed out of the tent first, but he wasn't far behind me. Part of me believed that the pine creepers were still out there, just waiting for me to slip up. When I saw the Buick, I got this awful feeling in the pit of my stomach. No, no. No. It was I empty. I knew it. I knew it, bro. Jordy was just gone. On the he way back to his house, I kept open. telling myself, we'll find him there. He just got up early and he wanted the comfort of his own bed. He wasn't there. We Dang. waited around all day, but he never came home. By the evening, our whole town was in a frenzy looking for him. What did I say, bro? I you never cannot told stay by yourself. I saw that night. Not even Augie. Nobody would believe me anyway. I've played it over and over in my head. Ooh. I'll never forget the summer of 95. That was the year Jordy Baker went missing. 